Hi everyone, it is Kimber, the study abroad specialist here. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited today to be talking to you for this third installment and final installment of the How to Find Your Perfect Study Abroad program series. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the two earlier videos from the past couple weeks, please click down into the description box after this video and take a look at both of those. So self-appointed study abroad programs, which is a term that I actually coined myself, are going to be study abroad programs that are degree oriented or excursion based and not related to any high school, college or university. So in layman's terms, basically what that means is that you are traveling abroad from your host from your home country to a new host country to earn a full degree either at the undergraduate level or the graduate level, or you are planning to do an excursion that is professional based that is not related to any specific university or college. So to look at some of the advantages of self appointed study abroad programs, the very first advantage that I would say is that you have complete independence. Now I know that this can sound a bit scary because unlike the other two types of common study abroad programs that I talked about in the other videos in this series, you have a little bit of guidance, whether it is through an organized program or through your current school, or even if you're working with someone like me who is a study abroad advisor, where you have people guiding you. If you're going to be doing self-appointed, most of it is not going to be guided. So this is really the type of program for people who have a lot of self-motivation. So if you are someone like that, I am the same, where you have a lot of self-motivation and you're going to be willing to research and look up things and figure out when your deadlines are, what you specifically have to get for each application, this is going to be for you. Because again, this is related to people who are trying to get a degree, whether it be at the undergrad or graduate level abroad. So nine times out of 10, probably 10 times out of 10, the system that you are trying to enter is completely different from what you're used to at home. And so you have to basically learn that entire system, what that looks like from an admissions perspective, from what's required from you. And so you really have to do it, you know, like from point A to point B to point C and beyond because there's not a lot of info out there. Now, luckily, um, I kind of come into this because that's the entire reason why I created my company to make study abroad a lot more simplified. But this is kind of just explaining one of the main advantages of taking on a program like this. I would say that the second advantage of doing this is that you're going to have a chance to explore what it would be like to potentially be in that country full time. So you're still a student at this point, but you at least get some of a sense. So whether it is you get an opportunity to do an internship or you get an opportunity to just immerse yourself in the culture based on the school that you are attending, you really kind of get that first snapshot of what it means to live in Germany and you know, kind of be a part of German culture. And of course you can get that with other types of study abroad programs, but it's a lot different because with these programs, you are potentially studying a year, two years, three years, even longer, depending on what your subject area is in that country. So you really get a chance to integrate yourself versus a lot of the um, other types of study abroad programs where you're there for like four months and sure you get to you know immerse yourself a little bit you may learn a little bit of a new language but it's definitely not the same thing as kind of taking that on on a longer term then i would say leading on from that the third advantage would be is that you have the opportunity to sort of plant your flag there as we say here in the u.s um plant the flag of yourself not of your other country by the way um but you definitely have the opportunity to say like I actually wanna pursue the chance to work here because most countries now, it, it varies depending on where you are, but most countries have sort of the programs where you can segue and at least work for two to three years after you complete your degree, particularly if you're at the graduate level and you completed an MBA or a master's in something like I did, you have the opportunity to transition into a different sort of tier or different visa uh, scheme to be able to actually work in a real company as a full-time worker within the um, country that you have just studied in. So that is really helpful. And again, that's completely different from other study abroad programs where you, you know, are usually there for a couple months and then you come back home. 
So you really want to be able to take advantage of the fact that you may be able to start your career off in the country where you started. So that's what happened to me. I finished undergrad here in the US and went over to the UK again. I had been there before in my junior year of college of undergrad, but then I went back for graduate school, completed two different programs and then got into some internships, fell into some freelance work and then finally was able to get into a full-time job. And so my career actually, like my adult career, as I like to say, kicked off in the UK. So it was perfect right after I finished my degrees. And in most countries, wherever you're studying, you do have the opportunity to do that. It may be a little bit less time. So it may be where you can only work for one year or for six months, but at least you get to start building up your resume in a real way after you complete your degree in the country that you studied in. So those are the main advantages from my standpoint. So the disadvantages. <laughs> so I am going to now completely contradict myself and say that the number one disadvantage is that these programs are completely independent. And so you're probably like, wait a minute, you just said it was an advantage. Again, I want to sort of hone in on the fact that it can be a complete disadvantage if you are someone who's not going to be willing to take initiative and also too if you're not someone who's going to be able to see the process through because as i mentioned before there's no hand holding in this process and it is a much bigger commitment than just deciding to study abroad for a couple months so you really have to be committed to it so if you are feeling overwhelmed by that you need to first evaluate and figure out like, am I someone who's gonna be willing to commit to figuring out when my applications are due? How do I need to complete this application? What type of essay do they want if there's anything? Are there any standardized exams? I know that particularly for students coming to study abroad in the US, that is something that confuses them because we are one of the only countries that has sort of standardized exams for every single uh, degree program. Um, and so kids are like, I mean, I actually worked for a standardized company, standardized exam company for quite some time. And I worked with graduate students coming from Europe and Asia and Africa to the US. And so the first question I would get was, what is this and how does it work? Um, and so does your program require that? If that is required, you have to factor that into your time applying. Um, so there's all these little things. And of course, Probably the biggest one that most students struggle with is getting the visa in check and what that means because again, most of the time the schools that you're applying to they're not going to be able to help you with that. They can sort of guide you along and say like, you know, we can, you know, send you information from your embassy or something like that, but it's not going to be the same as them kind of being able to apply for you. So you have to figure it all out on your own. So that could potentially be a disadvantage unless you're going to hold on tight to the process. Now I will say, this is a shameless plug. If you do need help with something like this, I actually, in addition to the association that I run for study abroad students, I also offer study abroad advisement. So you can click down into the link in the description box and find out more about that. So if you are in a place where you are looking to, you know, fulfill a degree abroad somewhere or an excursion program that is not related to a school, you need help with that figuring out we can work together to sort of figure out the process for that. And I'd be happy to help you with that. So I would say that the next disadvantage would be that there is no support system. So of course, hopefully if you are blessed, you do have a support system within your family and your friends. Um, but what I mean from that is again, similar to the fact that it's completely independent you don't have the benefit that you would have in a institutionalized program, which is video one, or the independent organized study abroad programs where there's sort of an infrastructure built to make sure that you get from point A to point B to point C. So you really, in addition to being self-motivated, have to have that confidence in yourself that you feel like, you know, I'm making the right decision. I know that going to get this degree abroad is really helpful for X, Y, and Z. Here's how I'm going to approach it. This is what I'm looking to get out of it. And you really have to have that inspiration from inside because there's not going to be someone there that you can always call to count on for that. Um, so really just take that into consideration as well. And the third disadvantage is it's more expensive. <laughs> um, so um, I sort of touched on this in the first two videos, but if you 
click down into the description box. You can download my free e-guide, which is related to the series. It's called Finding Your Perfect Study Abroad Program. So it's the same title of the series. And I dive deeper into sort of the economic part of it for each of these programs. But specifically with self-appointed, I like to talk about the money piece because again, it is fully you know, independent. So depending on what country you're coming from and what degree you are going towards, you may be able to find scholarships, you might not. You may be able to use student funding or student loans, you might not. Um, sometimes some of the programs require that you pay all the fees up front. Some of them require that you don't. It depends again on the country that you're going to, the program you're going to. One of the things that was kind of most interesting for me that I had not considered before um, when I went back to London for my grad degrees was that housing is not really connected, at least in the UK, to schools. And so you have to find independent housing, which is a lot different. And it tends to be a bit more pricey here in the US. We have it where it's like, your housing and your school and everything kind of all comes as one package. So it's not really something we have to think about at least when we're like in undergrad. And so that was something that I had to learn about and there's tons of information out there. So you can definitely find it, but it's little things like that that you have to understand like, you know, um, am I responsible for paying taxes, you know, like as a student because there are certain countries where you still have to pay into the tax system. Do you need to get health insurance or, you know, if you're, going to a country that has health insurance, how do you uh, qualify for that? Or is there a certain thing you have to do? And again, if you are in a program that has more structure, you typically don't have to think about that because there's someone there kind of figuring that out for you. But if you are going as an independent, self-appointed study abroad student, getting a full degree abroad, you have to figure that all out on your own, um, unless you're gonna be working with someone like me. But, um, you know, that is definitely a disadvantage because again, there, there are so many, unanswered questions and things that you have to learn along the way, which can, can be exciting for students, but also it's like, it's just a lot of things that you may not have thought about. And so I definitely encourage you um, to do that. All right, so that is the end of the video series. I hope that these have been helpful for you just to give you some insights on how to start thinking about, you know, the ways that you can approach finding a study abroad program that's gonna work for you. One of the reasons why I created this series and again, why I was so passionate about creating my business is because I know that feeling of, you know, you go to a search engine like Google and everything that pops back at you either is very generic, it's, you know, maybe not be relevant to you and it doesn't exactly make sense. And I also, and this is a bit controversial to say, but I also know too that a lot of times in the colleges and high schools and universities, while they may mean well, a lot of the advisors that are working to help students study abroad are, you know, maybe 20, 25 years out of date in terms of their information. And the other thing that sort of makes me upset is that a lot of them never studied abroad before. I don't know how you can advise people on something that you haven't done, but that's really common, just like it is in a lot of other industries. You're going to tell me how to do something that you don't know about. I won't get on a rant about that, but it really bothers me because you don't know what you're talking about because you've never done it. So what I will say is that I really encourage you to look at the other two videos. So definitely uh, review those. Also hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then share this video, share, share, share. I'm sure that if you are a prospective study abroad student, you probably have other friends and other people that you know that are interested in study abroad who would get a lot of help from this video and the other videos in this series and on this page. So please share that with them. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.